Hi folks, happy Sunday. Today I wanted to briefly talk about container image compatibility for schedulers, image selection, or both. You probably don't know what I'm talking about. Don't worry, we're gonna get into that. But first, this is a not a talk talk. And so there's two reasons for that. One, this does not represent the views of my employer. It does not represent the views of a community like open containers or working group. These are my thoughts and ideas that I mostly had yesterday. I had a few thoughts today, but I've mostly been programming. And so the second part of that is that I kind of realized that in, in our academic communities, we often wait for permission. Actually, it goes beyond academia. It also goes into industry too. We wait for permission to talk about ideas. We look for conference venues. We want to write papers. And it doesn't really make sense to me because oftentimes we have ideas prototypes, things that we want to talk about. And then we have to like what wait six months and then go to a little room and speak in front of 30 people and maybe they don't record the video. And so like, it's very exclusionary in that sense. That doesn't make sense to me. So I'm trying this out. I may never do it again, but I thought it would be fun to try. I hope you think so too. So let's get started. Sesame, no, I don't speak French. I'm not gonna try doing that. Okay, so container image compatibility, are you excited? Again, you don't know what I'm talking about, totally okay. Okay, so unless you've been living under a rock, actually, if you really have been living under a rock, totally cool. I would question how that is physically possible. There's like bugs under there. Also, the rock is very heavy. So maybe you dug a hole and you have like a little hobbit thing going on. How are you getting internet access right now? Anyway, there are these things called container technologies. This is a splay of kind of the brands that we have. So we have the whale, that is Docker. Run C is sort of the underlying kind of library. Singularity, Shifter, and Charlie Cloud, those are sort of the, the core HPC ones. And then Podman came around in like 2018 and was also like a rootless one. And generally these vary between, well, historically they vary between like whether it uses a, a daemon or not. Actually, a lot of these have a rootless mode now. And they also vary with like the, the format of the container. So for example, Singularity is gonna give you a single SIF, which is a squash FS file system, like one chunky layer. <laughs> the other ones are gonna give you actual layers. So TARD GZ archives that are basically extracted into a root file system when you run the container and then whoop, you shell in and I guess you don't know the difference. And just for fun, I actually, these are like the current logos that I think I found, but I went back in time into the time machine not that long ago, actually 2018. Okay, it was kind of long ago. 2018, I gave a talk and this was early 2018. So Podman wasn't released yet. I think the first release of Podman was in April, 2018. And these logos are like totally different. Like the whale used to have a face and like be like, Nee-nee. and now he's kind of flat. Shifter has a new shape thing going on. Singularity has changed a lot. Run C was a gerbil. I mean, it makes sense, right? Now he's not. Props to Charlie Cloud for like seeing the future and being like, I'm going with the flat logo right here and now. Alrighty, so why do we like containers? We know why, why do we love containers? Let's talk about that. Once upon a time, there was a scientist. Well, actually, if you're someone in cloud, you probably just love containers because they're like the unit of everything. But in science, you have different reasons. So once upon a time, there was a scientist. And actually, there was a ton of scientists and all of them were bald. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, one of them had a terrible accident and didn't have a face and one was really angry. And OK, anyway, we have we have an army of scientists here. And there was a reproducibility crisis. So this came out in early 2015. This was actually already happening. This is when it came to a head. It was an affront to all of psychology. Like the stuff that you are doing does not reproduce how how shameful and indeed we were shamed and we needed to work on that. Oh, uh, kind of felt like that. But containers came along and this is when all of these sort of HPC container technologies started to kind of pop up and around. And I was like, wow, I can take my Python thing and my operating system and my life's work, mad scientist noises, and I can put them in this container and all of a sudden I have reproducibility and portability like this is super great. So hooray. So container image compatibility, you still don't know what I'm talking about. Another kind of backstory. So there's a group called OCI, the Open Container Initiative. This is their website. 
And kind of the best way I can describe them is like a group of nerds that come together and talk about standards for containers. But there's a little more to it than that. Really, it's because there's a lot of industry partners that are working on implementations and tools. And if we were all doing like slightly different things, well, you would have a really bad day. And so this is why all these container nerds have come together for quite a few many years now. And we define specifications and rules for like the one way that you should do something. So for example, if you, all these are in GitHub, if you want to explore under the Open Containers organization, if you go to any of these uh, specifications, so for example, there's a specification for an image format, there's a specification for a container registry, you tend to see a document like this, like thou shall not do this, thou shalt do this. And really what they're saying is like, thou shall make thou JSON blobs in this format so that when two different implementations try to use the same JSON blob, one doesn't throw up because the format is like slightly different. It makes sense, right? So we need these, we need OCI because otherwise it would just be like a master cluster, you know what. But really like the questions that you might care about is like, okay, well, how do I interact with this container registry? What happens, uh, what does this JSON blob looks like that describes a container image? What happens when I run a container these need to have one answer. This is what the groups come together and they talk about, they make, they publish the, the specifications. So recently we had a new question. How do I know that my container is compatible with my host? And like, so for the most part, the answer to that was like, well, we're gonna match based on the platform, but then you're gonna wait like a long time, potentially pull like a really big container and you're gonna run it and it's gonna seg fault. Like, wah, 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 sorry. <laughs> Try again with a different one. So back last year, so I'm so OCI to step back has of course one of these distribution lists. It's a Google group. This is this is one of the threads. So this was September last year when I first picked up on this. Here we have Joe, someone named Toast. That's off to you, Toast. And then Marcin, who is still the leader. So they came into the list and they're like, hey, we presented to the, uh, the OCI weekly meeting. It looks like that was on August 24th, so last year. And we're going to start this working group to talk about image compatibility. So I don't know the backstory to this. Actually, I'd, I'd be curious to know myself, but like it was something that's needed. And this is what this working group structure is for, for OCI, so that we can have these kinds of, I think they're fun discussions. You may disagree, et cetera. So, now let's talk about container image compatibility. At least I think so, because I haven't actually rehearsed this talk and I'm just going through the slides and figuring it out as I go. I'm excited. So what have we been doing in this working group? Well, we start out with this massive document of use cases. This is just like a tiny little uh, section of it. We've been flying through the use cases though. Actually, we've been going incredibly slowly through these use cases, talking about each one in detail. And we kind of pose them as a persona. So as an image author, I want to be able to do this. As a domain architect, as a tool writer, I want to be able to do this. And some of them are very like practical, like, okay, like well, actually let's walk through the very basic use case. I am someone that is on my computer and I want to do Docker pull for a container. The most simple question about compatibility is like, I want to pull the container that is most compatible with my host. But you can imagine that those use cases get a lot more complex and the use cases also go into the developers. Like as a developer, I want you to design some artifact thing that has compatibility metadata that is easy for me to work with. So that's just an example. So I'm gonna be calling this kind of set of metadata that we are going to put somewhere. I say this because we haven't decided yet. This is like a TBA for the working group compatibility metadata. And these are fields that you might imagine that we care about, but you know, there's off sort of off the label use cases. For example, if you're running a workflow, maybe your workflow tool has specific metadata attributes that it cares about that aren't in sort of this core list. So what are the two use cases? So kind of to step back the story behind this talk, I was thinking about actually a library I was building in Go yesterday and I started to kind of think about the difference between what is actually image selection 
in what is actually scheduling because I wanted to build a graph for image selection. I wanted to take a bunch of different containers with different attributes. Maybe each would be a node, build this graph, and then I wanted to query it to get like the best selection. But then I started to think about, well, how does that actually relate to the scheduler? And I realized that a scheduler is like, it's still a graph, but it's a graph moving through time. Not only is it moving through time, the nodes, for example, in the graph, maybe those represent physical nodes, are actually changing. Like they are scheduled for some job at this time point, and then that changes over time. So it's like it's like a much more complex representation of the first case. And so I've really wanted to start thinking about and talking about the difference between these two cases, because then when you get into HPC versus sort of cloud Kubernetes, this, there's so many subtle differences. And that is literally why I put together these slides and this whole talk, because this is what I wanted to talk about, because it's exciting and it's kind of interesting to think about. And I want your feedback. Okay. So this compatibility, this compatibility metadata is used to describe an application. And when I say application, I mean that kind of generically. Now, it could be any of these three use cases. Let's talk about LAMPs. <laughs> if you haven't heard of LAMPs, it is like a, a molecular simulation. It's super easy to run. There's actually three different ways. Here's some egg uh, joke here. Three different ways that we might think about LAMPs. So the HPC use case one is like, I have built LAMPs on bare metal, because that's how we do HPC. I built my LAMPs on bare metal. I'm going to run that binary. HPC case two is like my cluster has singularity or podman, and I'm going to pull that container first, and then I'm going to run the container in bare metal. The third case is like cloud and Kubernetes. Well, I'm probably going to be pulling a container image that has LAMPs and running it. Now, in all of these cases, we care about some compatibility metadata about LAMPs, like the architecture. Maybe we care about the operating system and the version. Maybe we care about, we, we definitely probably care about the MPI variant, especially for HPC. And we probably also care if the container was built intending to be used with GPU, because that's totally going to decide what we need for the resources. So why do we need this compatibility metadata? Let's go more into this question. The reason is because we need it, well, we need it for scheduling and selection. So here is sort of the prototype of the most reasonable, the most expected kind of interaction. The most expected interaction is that you have some kind of workflow and LAMPS is a step in your workflow. And so you're basically going to submit your workflow probably to a workload manager, actually, no, you're not going to do that. You are going to have your workflow represented in a workflow tool. The workflow tool is going to be submitting different steps of it to the workload manager. And for each step, you're going to be asking for one or more nodes. Yes, I probably should have done a diagram for that. I will try to do that again in the future. Whether So there's, there's something to do with scheduling, something to do with image selection in here. We'll talk about that. But in there, there's going to be some kind of choice Assuming that you're pulling a container, for example, that you have to choose lamps A or lamps B. And so the only difference between these lamps here, I'll point out, is that one has GPU and one doesn't. So like, how do you choose? I don't know. I'm like the little smiley face. Hmm, let me stroke my beard. Oh, wait, I don't have a beard. Oh, gosh darn, I just need to pretend that I do. So let's talk again. So now, now with that generic use case, we can actually break down more into different contexts. So the first context is like, okay, I'm running on HPC and I don't have containers. Guess what? The image selection step is gone. Why? Well, let's talk about what image selection actually means when you're interacting with the registry. So you start with a container identifier, Docker pull, singularity pull, my awesome container. By the way, the tool is gonna pick up your, your host platform. You then ask that to a registry. This is defined by the OCI, from OCI, the distribution spec. And the registry is like, ah, found that image. Let me see here. Do I have a matching platform? And this is incredibly simple. So what you're looking at here is an image index. And it literally is a list of manifests. So for it's, it's going to go down that list. And it's just going to find the first match. So it's going to be like, 
Hey boss, we got a Power PC 64 LE. Is that the only one? No, definitely not. Okay, keep moving. Ah, AMD 64. Is that one good? Yup, that one looks good. Send it down. I'm sure that's exactly what goes on in registry. And so then you're actually going to pull that image. You get it on your host. You don't think about it. You're like, great. And you get an error message, of course, if you didn't have one. But for the most part, for the most part, people are using pretty common architectures. But as we know, HPC platform is not enough. We have an entire schema. We have entire schemas of architectures. So this is a, a library called ArchSpec, and this is like the paper by lots of my friends. Uh, yeah, and you can look at this. It's actually ArchSpec on GitHub. But the point is that even when we consider what we're calling you know, platform or architecture, there's more to the story. And actually there's even more to the story than that. And I guess I don't have a slide for this, but like. Imagine that you need to care about MPI because you're gonna, you're gonna bind something from the container to the host. Imagine that you care about IO patterns or something to do with hardware and GPUs, like the standard that we have now for pulling a container and only looking at that platform and further only choosing the first match, that is not enough. And so hopefully that kind of sets up in your head the need for this compatibility metadata. So, when you do not have a container, again, we were talking about this HPC use case where you're starting not with a container URI, you're starting with your awesome binary. <laughs> you have basically already done the image selection. You almost did the image selection when you built your binary. It already has all of those things into it and it becomes just a problem of scheduling. And actually this is the current state of HPC. You have your binary, you kind of give some set of metadata to the scheduler, like, yeah, I want I want a GPU node, and I know already that node has the MPI that I want, but I want to run this exact build of lamps that I've already done. And then your scheduler is basically going to be like, okay, yeah, we, we do have a GP node, GPU node. You're gonna have to wait 48 hours for it. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. I'll I'll go, you know, I'll go on a little vacation or something. And then you get the node. And like, hopefully you've done that coordination right so that your thing runs. If you screwed up, you're gonna have to wait another 48 hours. I'm just kidding. Actually, I'm not. That's exactly what happens. So the HPC case, without containers, there is no image selection step, step because you're taking an existing application and you're just scheduling it. Case number two though, still on HPC, but you're asking for a container. And actually to step back, Absolutely do not have your jobs pull the container when they run, because you could get a case of like a thousand nodes pulling the container. You wanna pull the container binary first and then run it. That's a moot point. We're just gonna pretend that's not a thing right now. And we're gonna say, okay, well now we need compatibility information for scheduling and selection. So again, back to this workflow case, here's my workflow step. Here's this particular image URI for lamps. Can you get me a node? And so this time the scheduler is like, okay, you, you have this lamps URI and you're requesting a GPU. Let me check the possible images. So these artifacts to see if there's one that matches. Yes, that's possible. And yes, I also have nodes with GPU in my resource graph, which is a separate thing from the compatibility artifact metadata Here's your node. And so here's the insight that I had yesterday. I was like running along and I was like, oh no, there's like more than one compatibility artifact thing. We have been thinking about compatibility metadata on the level of a single container. And that makes sense, right? It's you build them alongside each other. They get pushed to registry together in some format we don't know yet. But in the case of what a scheduler needs to know, when it's trying to decide whether it can give you a node, it almost needs to know like one, a subset of that compatibility metadata that's important to it. So for example, GPU is something important because that's a resource in its graph. It may not care as much about like, I don't know, maybe you have some like workflow, maybe there's some kernel or workflow identifier in there that would just be too much detail and actually would hurt scheduling if you gave it to it because it would be like, this is too much information. Like, I don't need to know all this. But I realized that we almost need this meta artifact that takes a subset of these fields that the scheduler cares about and can give it to the scheduler and be like, this is what's available 
in that image space. This is what is possible. And so this is what I'm calling an abstract or computed compatibility set. And I don't think it should physically exist. So I don't think that every time you push a new variant of your awesome lamps image, you should generate a new global artifact. I think this should be calculated somehow on the fly from the ones that do exist. And as I mentioned before, not all application metadata is going to be important. And, and re really hard question for our community is going to be figuring out which subset of that set is important for a scheduling use case. And this is actually a cool part. Once the scheduler has that abstract compatibility metadata, chooses for you a node, actually what it's implicitly doing without kind of directly doing it is kind of serving as a filter. So it's gonna give you, for example, if it only gives you nodes with GPU, it has filtered down the, the ultimate container that you're going to pull, to pull to those that have GPU. It hasn't really done that directly because the way the algorithm on that node is going to work for some container runtime is that it's going to sniff, yes, sniff, this is what these tools do. It's gonna sniff that host and be like, I have a GPU. So I'm gonna to try to pull a container URI that also has a GPU. And so it's this indirect filter. I also think that's really cool. Like this is how the, these two things I think might work together. And guess what? <laughs> The problem gets more interesting because the metadata that we're going to care about is hugely going to vary between HPC and cloud context. And you probably could have already guessed this, right? And so I want to talk about just a very high level, an example that I thought about. So here are two examples of what you might need to know for scheduling. So in Kubernetes, you kind of care about less, right? Because, okay, you, you definitely want to match architecture because like, if you don't, you're going to get like a invalid execution binary. I forget what that error looks like. It it, it, it doesn't work, folks. Um, you care less about the kind of the version of the operating system inside the container. MPI is mostly okay. Granted that the, container, the, the containers that you pull could work together and granted that your network is pretty good. You still need to know about the GPU. Now with HPC, when you're running on bare metal, you absolutely care about all these things because you're probably going to be binding. It's not that you, if you have MPI, it's just going to be living in the container and running from there. You're going to actually be binding it to your host. And if you get that wrong, it is going to throw up on you and you do not want MPI to throw up on you. So this is just one example, I guess, with MPI of how the scheduling needs would be different. But with HPC, I will point out, you might get a little more flexibility if you use a container. So the, the example here is just that I removed the operating system from having to be like an exact match, which probably doesn't, yeah, I mean, for bare metal, if you build it in a different place and then you run it, you might, you're gonna get a weird error depending on, depending on all the details, I wouldn't need to go into that. So this slide I think is redundant from the first one. Yeah, just ignore that slide. I should have taken that out. Okay, so how do image selection needs vary? There's a much easier question to answer here. It comes down to whether you're using a container image or not. So when you're using, to kind of summarize what we just talked about, when you're using a bare metal application, you have already chosen. There is no image selection. But when you use a container, you still need to go through that selection process from a registry. So what does this mean for our work? Why should you care? This, what thing, kind of things should you think about? I think that as we move forward with designing these specifications, we need to prototype in the context of scheduling and selection. What does it mean for our work? Well, this is mostly a point for me. I was designing these compatibility artifacts on the level of the image selection for the application container, but we need to think about this higher level abstraction for the scheduler, for a scheduler. And I was, I was very dumbly <laughs> thinking of just this matching case of a single application to a single node, but guess what? A subset of that metadata somehow needs to be able to inform the scheduling. What kind of experiments might you do? I'm not gonna tell you specifically about my experiments or my team's experiments that we're playing, playing, that we're planning, that's top secret, but generally I think the, what the work that our community needs to do is to demonstrate the value added of this compatibility metadata in different contexts 
Because what if we do all this work and then it doesn't help? I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to help because like pulling a container for a GP versus not would make a difference. But anyway, we have to prove it experimentally. We also need to demonstrate designs that work for both of these cases. And this is the insight that I have this weekend. So how do you get involved? I really want folks to get involved. Superficially, when you mention this to someone, their eyes glaze over and they're like, oh my God, she's talking about containers again. This stuff is really cool to think about. It's also really fun. So here's how you can get involved. You can add some use cases for a document. We are still very slowly going through it. Come chat with us in one of the Slack. So there's the HPC container Slack. Lots of container nerds there, apparently, obviously, and the open container Slack. I mean, folks, if it has containers in the name, you're going to find people that want to talk about containers. Come to if you're if you don't really want to talk to people, you're like, no thanks. I will just post on like a list or something. You can start an issue or discussion on GitHub, uh, join one of the mailing lists. It's a very, it's a lower stress if you don't want to talk to people or just like reach out to one of us via chat, email, whatever. And more specifically, that's me, vsock, like socket, sock, socket, sock, sock. Anyway, um, that is all that I have. This was my first not a talk talk. I really didn't practice that. That's why there were slides that like shouldn't have been there. And I just kind of like moved through them and I've kind of been rambling, but let me know what you think. Maybe we should do these more often. I don't know. Maybe this was a terrible idea. I need to get back to programming. I was working on something kind of cool before I decided to do this. So see you next week. Or actually uh, this coming weekend is FOSDEM. I'm not going to be there, but I'm giving a talk. And it's pretty fun and I actually practice that one. So go check that out. Okay, bye. <laughs>